I got it. to start with our first song, hymn number 290, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. And I pray that this is not just something we sing right now, but this is something we can do all Sabbath long and all week long, right? Let's sing it 290. Glory and 
part of the song. It says, then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. This is uh, kind of why we're here, right? We are here to go to a dying world and proclaim the good news of Jesus, death, resurrection from the cross, and he's coming back. Amen? Amen. The next song is closely related. Hymn number 108. Very, very familiar. Hymn number 108, Amazing Grace. Sing like you believe that you're saved with amazing grace. Sing like we're in the courts of heaven. <laughs> yes, I do as well. <laughs> so you want to make sure to be there, and it's on Sundays from 6 to 7, and that's the address right there. It's right across the girls' store. So that's care group, and then we have prayer meeting. Prayer meetings are on Thursdays from 7 to 7.30, and that is at the Rose.
Bible shop in Boulder. It's been a blessing as well, and we have a really special announcement uh, for this weekend, and I want to invite Nicole uh, to come up here and tell us a little bit more about this special event that's about to happen, and Sam as well. Evening Revive. Happy Sabbath. How many of you have been blessed by this ministry? Awesome. How many of you have been blessed by Vespers, but also all the other cool events that go on during the week? Awesome. Same here. I really enjoyed all of it. And including looking forward to the banquet coming up. 
as while the many of these activities are provided free of charge to all of you guys, as you well know, at least in this current world, money does not grow on trees. I think maybe the tree of life over the <laughs> heaven will have some, but it does not currently. So um, as you may have guessed, it's the offering time. And if you have the ability and desire and are eager to share some financial blessings with this ministry, this is the time to do it. And you know, let, let's have prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this Sabbath. Thank you so much for this ministry and the ability, all the abilities you've given us. I pray for this offering, both the, the offering that will be financial, but also the offering that that is given by people's presence of being here, of a smiling face, of being a joyful Christian. I just pray that you would give us all the ability to share an offering in some way in our lives. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 We'll be honest at this time. going to give a message. Uh, <laughs> how many of you are thankful for the week? <laughs> um, I am so thankful I was able to manage to deliver my first message in the class. It was very hard for some of seminarians because I used first sermon message, first person message. Uh, sermons, which is I put myself in the story. So it was the hardest sermons, and, but I'm thankful. It was, I was so nervous, try to memorize all the hard words, the hard vocab, but God is good. All right, before the message, let us bow our head and pray one more time. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you we come before the thrones of grace, mercy, and protection. We know that you are a powerful God. You care each one of us. Your eyes are on upon us. And we are so thankful that the weak have been blessed. Lord, we ask that as the Sabbath is here, we pray your spirit will guide us, help us to look upon the things that will grow that will help us to grow in love with you and to love you even more. We ask that you will send the Holy Spirit to be with each one of us as we prepare our hearts to hear your message that will speak to your servants, AJ. We pray all these things in Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen. Somebody is, it's kind of, it could be on 
unusual for somebody to get out of their way to say hi to you and making sure that you're okay. And so that really meant a lot to me. And his sincerity in that, in that question, it was really, really interesting to me too because I could tell that this guy was really, he really cared. He wasn't just asking just to ask, he really cared. And ever since then, I've always seen this person going around um, asking people if do you want to help, if you wanted some help at Revive, he would come and help us out with the cross at the end of Vespers and help us, if I would be the one cleaning everything up, he'll come and be like, hey, sister, let me help you. And I'll be like, okay, thank you, cool, cool, you got it, okay, thank you. And, and we've been really blessed to have this brother uh, with us in Revive. The guy that I'm talking about is the speaker for tonight, his name is AJ. And we pray that, you know, as God speaks through him tonight, that he may be blessed as well. So, Brother AJ, you want to come up here and we have a word of prayer for you. And thank you so much for everything you've done for our life right here. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for a brother like AJ and uh, for him being such a nice, caring person, Lord, for this ministry. And Lord, as tonight as he is about to speak, Lord, please send your angels to surround him, to surround this whole room, Lord. Speak through him. We love you in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. While I'm getting this stand adjusted, um, the song that I'm going to be playing for you guys is um, it's called Glorious. Well, it's a, it's a hymn in the hymnal. On my music, it says Austrian Imperial Hymn, but um, it's the melody has been used for uh, a hymn in our Adventist hymnal. If you want to follow along with the words, it's number 423.
happy sandals. Yeah, happy sandals. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> you know, I'm so blessed to be here right now. Every single day I have to live is a marvelous, wonderful blessing for me and for us all. Can we say amen? Amen. 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 Well, you know what, today we're going to focus on an important, very important topic for all of us, and that is freedom. A lot of us hear that word all the time, freedom. But what does that really mean? What is true freedom in Christ? What is true reconciliation in Christ? A lot of us, we think freedom is just, you know, okay, we, we got a nice flag here, we represent what we <laughs> believe, but is it really deeper than that? Is it more internal than just external? So we're going to find out what true freedom is in Christ. Um, and how can we truly experience that real freedom today? Not tomorrow, but today. So we're going to find that out. But before we go into the message, let us pray and let us seek God to um, embrace true freedom in him. Let's pray. We just want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done. You came, you died for us, and we are here because of you, because you love us so much. We pray that we may, we may embrace true freedom in Christ today, that we may be reconciled to you, Lord, and experience that peace that passes all understanding. We thank you, we praise you, and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Anyone here want a dollar? <laughs> I'm serious. Anyone here want a dollar? Think I'm playing? You have to come and get the dollar. If you want it, come and get your dollar. If you want it, come and get your dollar. Amen. Hey. No, that, that was funny. I did, I did not expect that for sure. So I just offered a dollar for everyone here. Everyone had the opportunity to accept what I had just put out there. I said, you can have the dollar. It's yours. I'm just giving it away. I don't mind giving stuff away. I know that may sound a little weird, but I don't mind doing that. Okay, that, that, that's actually a good thing, right? So someone here accepted the dollar. There were some here that were a little skeptical. Be honest. Be real. Be, be honest with me. There were some here that were a little skeptical. This can't be real. This guy can't just be giving away a dollar for no reason. That doesn't make sense, you know? But to me, it's, it's not a big deal. It's, it all came down to whether you was going to accept it or not. So where did it really start? It didn't start when you came down. It started when you heard the proposal. That's where it started. So either you believed, and you, well, if you really believed, you would actually have come up. But, but there were some, there was one person that said, no, I believe that that dollar is mine. <laughs> and so she came up here, and she accepted the dollar. It came down to whether she was going to accept it or not. But it was for everyone here if you wanted it. It was your choice. You know, the amazing thing about true freedom, true freedom is really about a choice. It's a decision. Many of us look at freedom as an emotion. It's not. Real freedom in Christ is a decision. But we can choose every single day and say, well, God, this is too good to be true. I'm not going to accept that. I don't believe that that's going to work out. But if we really have faith, what are we going to do? We're going to accept, right? We're going to accept that freedom. Well, you know, there are people that have freedom right there. They had it in their grasp. They had true freedom, but it was tough for them to accept it based on where they were in their situation. They were, they were used to being in slavery. They were used to being in bondage. So when freedom came out to them, it was, it, was, it was too good to be true. This couldn't be real. And so please turn with me to Exodus 14 and 10 through, 10 through 13. Exodus 14, verses 10 through 13. We're going to look at, you know, what's, what's going on in their minds? Why, why are they uh, responding the way that they're responding? So we're going to look at this situation. Now, we, most of us know here the, 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 um, the story here. Um, in this situation, they are on their way to the Red Sea. They're walking to the Red Sea. But, but something happens. Something happens that gets their attention. So let us look at this scripture here. 
And because I, I like for all of us to, to get involved, I just need some readers. I need readers for 10, I need readers for 11, 12, and 13. 10? Anyone got 11? 11. 11, okay. 12? Anyone? Uh, um, it's it's uh, 10 through 13. So we have 10, we have 11. 14? So who, who has who has uh, twelve? Okay, thirteen. Yeah, thirteen. Okay. So let us let us start in verse ten. We're gonna we're gonna look at this scripture. So I read it for verse ten. Please read for us. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. Amen. Amen. So let's stop right there. Pharaoh drew drew near drew nigh, the, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. First of all, they are afraid. <laughs> it got their attention for sure. Amen? It truly got their attention in that situation. You know what's amazing? God will allow certain situations to come into your life to get your attention. Some are very silent here. Yeah. But God will allow certain situations to come into your life to actually get your attention. They, they lifted up their eyes. Now imagine they're on their way. Did that actually get their attention? That, that Pharaoh was on his way to get them? Were they really embracing what God had promised to them, or them going to the promised land, they really embraced that in their hearts, or what actually got their attention was that, oh, they're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> That's what got their attention. It wasn't that they were on their way to the promised land. What got their attention was that, oh, something bad is about to happen. That's what got their attention. One thing we need is not to embrace the problem, but we need to embrace the problem solved. Amen? Amen. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times we're so afraid of the situation that's making us so uncomfortable, but God is only allowing those things to actually get our attention to embrace Him more. Because we can become so comfortable, we can come in, we, be, we can be in our comfort zone in our minds and think, "Oh, well, everything is fine, everything is good." But you know what's amazing is we praise God the least when the tough times are happening. That's the trouble. <laughs> yeah, we pray. We 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 actually. We say nothing about God. We don't praise God. We don't pray to God when tough times are coming our way. But as soon as things go well, praise God. God is so good. God is so wonderful. The amazing thing is true, true freedom isn't dependent on the, the circumstance. It is not dependent on the situation that we're going through. So let's go to verse 11 and look at their response as they're in this, this situation. Let's look at their Response. response. Then they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Verse, verse 12. Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians then to die in the wilderness. Wow. So hold on. <laughs> They're on their way to their so-called mm -hmm. promised land. And now, because things aren't going their way, what do they do? They start blaming. Oh, Lord, oh, man, we should have been in Egypt, man. We shouldn't even be going through this. This is foolishness. We shouldn't even be here. Now it's blame time. It's not about that I'm even in this situation that's freeing me. I'm just, I'm just upset about this circumstance. Now I'm going to blame God. One thing I know, one problem I, I see within the church um, as a whole is a lot of finger pointing. It's a problem. That's a problem. We're always finger pointing and blaming those around us. We're even blaming God when things aren't going a certain way that we want it to go. We're always pointing that finger. What does that do for us in the end? What does that do? How does that help us spiritually? How does that help us? 
How does that give us true freedom? It doesn't. We're in a box now in our minds. We're just going to point that finger. Oh, it's your fault. This is why this happened. This and that. And there's conflict throughout the church. It's a shame. It shouldn't be that way. Does it really solve anything? Absolutely not. Now the people, they have turned from what? From fear, because in reality they were afraid, right? That's the root. They were afraid. And what did that lead to? That lead to blame, right? And they're crying out to God was only because of just the situation, not because he has been so good to them. So now I'm just going to praise you conditionally. A lot of times that's what we're doing. We praise God conditionally. Well, things are going well, I'm going to praise you. If they don't, oh. That's the mindset. That's where their minds were. They were still in Egypt in their minds. They were in prison. Even though they were free physically, their minds were still in Egypt. They were still focused on, well, you know what? I, I wanted my way. When they couldn't even embrace the blessing that was there, right there at their hand. It was like there was a, a million dollar book that was given to them. Saying, hey, here you go, you can take it. But they just said, no, nah, no. <laughs> no, I'm a little uncomfortable with that. And they stayed right in their seats, in their minds. They couldn't embrace that truth and that real freedom in Christ. A lot of times we magnify the problem rather than the problem solved. Wow. You got to think about that. A lot of times we're always magnifying the problem rather than the problem solved. That shows we have absolutely no faith. So since this is going wrong, you know what? You know what, this is, well, you know, oh, it's God's fault. We're magnifying the problem. We're not ma magnifying the situation. That situation is not us. <laughs> that's not who we are, but we stay in that box. And that's what leads, really, to, to, to not being free in Christ, to still being in that bondage. Verse, verse 13. Verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Where does he start with? Moses is like, because he knows what the issue is. He knows how they're really feeling deep down. What does he say? Fear not. Don't you be afraid. I know that's why you're acting the way you're acting. That's why you're saying the things you're saying. No, don't be afraid. And what? See the salvation of the Lord. It comes down to accepting that salvation. But we can't be afraid as we're accepting that salvation. There can't be both at the same time. We have to be confident. We have to be we have to have that faith in him that says, hey, no matter how the situation is going right now, everything is not going my way, but that's fine with me because why? I'm already free. I'm already free. So whatever happens to me, it's okay. I'm not going to complain about it. And Moses is saying, hey, don't you be afraid. A lot of the, the, the issues or a lot of the things that we say of our mouths is strictly out of fear. A lot of the things we say out of our mouths is really out of fear. What's going to go wrong next? And we stay in that same mindset. That's what hurts us. That's what truly hurts us. As we go down to verse, verse 13. For the Egyptians you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. God has it all under control. He's saying to the people, don't focus just on what's not going well at this time. Don't focus on that. He's already brought you out, out of that jail, out of that prison. Why are you so afraid? Even though it doesn't look good, don't focus on that. Hold your peace. Have that peace that passes all understanding, but not dependent on your circumstance. And he wants the people to truly believe that deep in their hearts. What does the Lord say? Uh, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. What? But of what? Power. Power. What? Love. Love. And of what? Sound mind. Sound mind. He says, hey, I haven't given you the spirit of fear. Don't focus on your situation. I have not given you that. I've given you the spirit of what? Of power, even in your, your toughest situation. I have given you love, even in your, your circumstance. And I have given you a sound mind. You don't have to focus on what's going wrong. You don't have to focus on that. Why? Because I'm the one who's already set you free. 
And that's what we must embrace every single day. For the experience, true freedom. Not just saying that we're Christian, not just saying that we're Adventists. I'm talking about true spiritual freedom. A lot of things that we do wrong is because we are still in bondage with pure fear in our hearts. And that's what God is trying to help us to overcome today. So what in the world is true freedom? Well, one of the things we're going to find out is what freedom is not. A lot of us think freedom are certain things, but we're going to find out exactly what freedom actually isn't. The first thing that freedom is not, it's not the license to do whatever you want. Okay? That is not freedom. Okay? If you think that, okay, because God has set me free, now I can do whatever I want to do, it's about me. No, that's not freedom. You are still in bondage. You are still in bondage in your mind. Think about this. Think about if you're riding down, and you're, you're driving your car, and you're speeding. You are breaking laws, okay? You're breaking laws, and you're endangering yourself and people around you. And the cop comes, and you hear those sirens, right? I bet you're afraid then, huh? Bet you're real scared then. But you hear those sirens, you're like, oh, oh man. And you got to stop, right? When the, when the police comes, think about this. What if the police came? and said, hey, you know, you're breaking that law. You're doing wrong. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I know I got to pay this ticket. Yeah, I know. And the police says, you know what? I have a ticket here, but I'm going to pay it for you. Oh, my. I'm going to pay the ticket for you. You're going to be under grace right now. I'm going to pay this ticket just for you. What is your reaction there? You're grateful, right? You're grateful. You're very, you're very thankful. But does that give you the license to go out and to start speeding again? No. No. Absolutely not. You're not under law in that situation. You're under grace. But it doesn't mean you're to go out now to do whatever you want to do. Right? When you go ahead and you say to yourself, I'm going to go ahead and do whatever I want to do, that shows you didn't accept the grace that was given to you day one. That shows you don't accept what, what the officer just did for you. Now you're saying, I can do my own thing. It's about me now. Yeah, I just got off. And you know what you're doing? You're putting yourself at risk. That's what you're doing. You're putting yourself at risk and others around you. So we're going to, so real freedom is not the license to do whatever you want to do, okay? Another thing that freedom is not, it's not entitlement, okay? You're entitled for nothing. Just know that. I'm being honest, talking to myself. You are entitled of nothing. Everything that you have is a pure blessing from God. You are entitled for nothing, okay? So thinking that, that freedom, that, 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 okay, well, yeah, I, I, I accept Christ, so now I'm entitled to get this blessing or to get that. Or get, no, you ain't. No, you're not. Everything is a pure gift from him. We should just be saying thank you because I'm not worthy of that. I've broken laws. I'm a sinner, and you have given me this blessing. I need to accept that blessing. So freedom is not entitlement, okay? Another thing freedom is not, it is not dependent on your situation. True freedom is not dependent on what you do or don't have. I want you to know that. Because some of what we're going to do is we're going to compare our life to everyone else around us. Well, they got this, so if I don't got that, Lord, it's your fault. Is that right? It is not dependent upon what you have. True freedom is not something that you can just touch your feet. It's spiritual. It's deeper than that. It's deeper than money. It's deeper than a big car. It's deeper than, than a nice house. It's deeper than all that. You are, in, you are not entitled for anything. And so you're not dependent. You're not dependent on the situation to make you really free. That's, I, I really believe we need to remember that. Freedom is not centered on titles or possessions. It's not centered on your money. No, it's not. You can, you can have all those things and still be in bondage in your mind. You still can. You can still be in that sin in your mind even with all those, those nice things. So that's another thing. And, and lastly, 
freedom itself is not a right. It is a privilege. It is not a right. It is a privilege from God. Amen? A lot of us feel as though this is what I should have. This is my right to have this or that or to so-called be free. No, it's not. It is purely a blessing. What is the Lord saying? Galatians 5 verse 13. For you were called to freedom, brethren. Only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. Right? Galatians 5 verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stand fast. Be established. Don't be all over the place mentally. No, stay established in his words. Stay established in his truth that you may experience real liberty in Christ. So that we may break those yokes of bondage, bondage in our hearts. For some of us, the yoke of bondage is, is our past. I know there's some that have some difficult past, but you can't leave that on you because it's going to slow you down. It's going to slow down your progression spiritually. Those things cannot be your end all in your heart. No, you have to cut those things off if you experience true freedom. And that's what Christ wants for us. Because there's a real yoke of bondage upon us and that if it's still in our hearts, it's going to be hard for us to really, truly accept what he has done for us. <clears throat> One thing I truly love about God's word is that he gives us, he always gives us a solution. He knows our hearts. He knows where we are. He knows what we're frustrated about. So he says, you know what? I'm going to give you something that you need. And this is something for all of us here today that we all need. We need a so-called declaration of independence. You ever heard of that? You ever heard of the Declaration to in, of Independence? You ever heard of that? What is that really, what is that, what does that show? True, true independence, true independence is really centered in God's word and his promises. Amen? So I'm going to go to the Declaration of Independence right now. Let's go to Exodus 20. Let's go to Exodus 20 and experience the Declaration <coughs> of Independence in him. Not your situation. But in him. Exodus 20. We know this, of course, as God's Ten Commandments. But these aren't just commandments. These are promises. Okay? These are promises as well. So let's look at Exodus 20. The people have gone, still going through so much issues while they're out in the wilderness. Says, you know what? I need to give you all something to really liberate you all. So here it goes. In verse, verse 2. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Stop right there. What does he say? I'm the one who's liberated you. I'm the one who has got you out of prison. I'm the one who has taken away those burdens from you. I'm the one who's done that. I've gotten you out of that land of Egypt. Some, because they were still, their, their minds were in Egypt, it wasn't even bondage anymore in some minds. In some people's minds, it was actually their freedom. So slavery was their freedom in some of their minds because they were so used to it. They were comfortable. They were in their comfort zone. And God is saying, no, no, that place is a house of bondage. I have something so much better for you. I have true freedom that I want you to experience. So you know what? Since you are going to experience me, have no other gods before me. I have to be first. The Egyptians can't be your, 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 your help in this situation. No. It's not them that's going to back you up. It's me. You are actually in slavery, but in your minds, you got way too comfortable. Now, it's about first having God as the first, as your true God in your heart. That's where it starts. To get out of that house of bondage in our hearts, we have to accept Christ. Amen? <clears throat> Some of us, we say we accept Christ. But in our daily actions, that can be farther from the truth. That can be truly far from the truth. So, 
It takes that every single day to first start, hey, I'm not going to have any other gods. I'm not going to have any other things in my mind that's first and foremost that I may be delivered out of this bondage within my mind. Second, <clears throat> you shall not make yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. They didn't bring you out. <laughs> these carved images that you're worshiping, these idols that you're worshiping in, in Hollywood, they didn't bring you out. They didn't give you victory. Why in the world are you worshiping them? Why in the world are you making all these graven images? The what? They didn't deliver you. I did. You go ahead and you worship me. You choose me first. You shall not take the name of the Lord, your God, in vain. Respect the one who just freed you. Respect the name of the one who just brought you out. You're free. You're not in that situation anymore. Respect me. Respect my name. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. I have made a special day just for us. I'm the one who brought you out. I didn't bring you out and then say, okay, goodbye. No, I'm still in your life. You know, have a, a deeper, intimate relationship with me. I'm going to set one day a week. Every single day we're to grow closer, but I'm going to set a special day, a special date with me and you every single week just to commemorate that I brought you out. It's all about us accepting that in our hearts. Amen? I want us to have true Sabbath rest, not just on the seventh day Sabbath, but every single day of our life. I want us to have that rest in our hearts every single day. But when we embrace him, that's what we'll truly have. We'll have true rest in him. Honor your father and your mother. Respect authority. I'm the ultimate authority. I'm the one who brought you out. So respect those <laughs> around you. They know much more than you do. <laughs> Respect them. Respect uh, parental figures. Par uh, respect them. Verse 13. Thou shalt not murder. Why in the world are you going to take a life when I just gave you your life? I just saved you. Why in the world would you take somebody else's life? Why in the else would you try to kill someone else's character, talk bad about them, or kill them in your, in your words? When I'm the one who is, who is for you, who's talking good about you. Why would you do that? Why would you murder when I'm the one who saved you? You could have been there, but I'm the one who brought you out. Why would you murder when I'm the one who gives life? If you're going to accept true freedom. Verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Be faithful. <laughs> I've been faithful to you. Be faithful to the one that you so-called say that you love. Don't you commit adultery? No. I'm the one who's been faithful to you. Be faithful to the one that you have dedicated your life to. Amen? Amen. Thou shalt not steal. Verse 15. I've given you so much and you want to take from someone else? Why? Why would you do that? Why would you want to take when I'm the one that's giving so much to you? I've given you freedom. Why in the world are you going to try to take from someone else or steal? Come on. It seems like now you don't respect what I've given you because you're willing to steal from someone else. Come on. That's not right. Verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Why in the world are you going to lie? What's the point of lying? How is that going to help you? When I've given you this truth, I've given you this, this, this help, why in the world are you going to lie? For what? Verse 17. Thou shalt not covet your neighbor's house. I have given you freedom. Why are you coveting what someone else has? I've given you all that you need. There's no need to covet anything if you really want true freedom in your heart. We need to write these commands, write these, these promises in our hearts every single day. 
if we truly accept true freedom. Freedom is not dependent on our situation. It's about the God that we serve. Amen? Amen. 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 There's a young man. I know him pretty well. There's a young man who, for many years, he was in bondage, physically. He had a lot of, a lot of issues. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of, of a problem called seizures. Anyone ever heard of seizures? Yeah? Seizures aren't fun, for sure. But this young person, this young man, he had seizures for many, many years. He was, he was in bondage in his mind. He says, you know what, I, I can't deal with this no more. This is too much. I have to think about what's going to happen next. I can't just go to school and everything be fine. You know, this could happen again. I want freedom. I want to get away from this situation. I want true freedom in, in God. I, I, need, I need help with this situation. So he went, uh, you know, for many years. He's visited a lot of doctors and neurologists. And he eventually went to a very well-known hospital and he talked with the, the, the neuroscience the scientists, and for many times they talked, and you know the, the scientists, the neuroscientists told them, told him, okay, well you're gonna have to go through some tests, you know, to see where this issue is taking place in, in your brain. And so for many years, for for about a few months or so, they they looked after the young man, and eventually, um, he said, the the doctor said to the to the young man, all right. Um, it's been shown that there is a one area, a small area in your brain that has been affected, and there is a surgery that needs to take place. And so the young man had to pray uh, for a while and say, you know, I don't, I don't know. This, may see, this is tough. You know, part of my brain is going to be gone for the rest of my life. But the key is, this young man, he wanted freedom so bad, it didn't matter what he was losing. It didn't matter what he was losing in that situation. So he said, you know what? But now... Think about this, the doctor or the neurologist, he said, the choice is yours. I'm not going to force you to do this, but the choice is yours if you really want to experience true freedom. Eventually, the young man said, okay, I'm going to go for it. And he had his surgery. He had brain surgery about almost three years ago. Now, some may say, okay, who in the world is that guy? That guy is me. That person is me. I've had brain surgery. I had brain surgery three years ago. Some would say, that's, come on, that's not true. No, it is. <laughs> you just can't notice. But I said to myself that day, when he put out that proposal, I want freedom from this problem. I don't want to deal with this anymore. So I was willing to say, okay, there's a part of me that has to go. It has to go right now. I've been seizure free for almost three years since um, 2016. It's amazing, it's 2019 already, it's amazing. Mm. But 2016, before I came to the seminary, uh, God has blessed me uh, mightily to experience or to, and even accept that true freedom. But the key is, I had to accept that this, this scientist, this, this, this doctor, had the answer for me. I had to believe that. I had to trust that this was the right thing to do for me. Not just for that situation, because I'm telling you, after the situation, I was having a lot of doubts. I was all messed up. I mean, I had problems everywhere in my body. If you even would try to talk to me, it would be tough for me to do that. But he, he guaranteed me, he said, you know what? You still make the right decision. It's tough right now. It's difficult right now. But you know what? You made the right move. And you're not gonna have to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow, what seizure you're going to have tomorrow. It's not going to happen again for you. You know what? He was right. And I haven't had it in almost three years. But a part of my brain, yes, it's gone. Small portion is actually gone. Some would never even realize that when they talk to me. But you know what? God is beyond my situation. God, or my, my situation, is much smaller than the God that I serve. Amen. My problem is much smaller than the one who can give that true healing, that true freedom. I had to believe day one that I was going to be free from this problem, this situation. And God said, you know what? You are now free indeed. I had to accept it though. Every single day of our lives, friends, we have to accept that freedom 
in Jesus Christ. Some may say, oh, I already do. I go to church. You know, I do this, I do that. But it's beyond that. It's beyond just that. It goes deeper. It goes deeper than just going into church. It has to have, you have to have a mindset that says, I have dedicated my life to the one that has just had surgery on me. I needed this for myself. Now, as a person, I'm not, I'm not afraid anymore. I can go ahead. I don't have what others may have here, a nice, great car and all that stuff. But you know what? God has given me a nice bike, and I love it every time I ride it. Right? Because why? I'm free in my mind. I'm free. There was a time I couldn't even get on it because there was a risk that if I was riding it and had a seizure, boy, it could be traumatic. It could be terrible. So now I'm free. I can ride that bike and say, hey, how y'all doing? And I can be happy. No matter if I have the whatever car, I'll have that in the future. But you know what? For right now, I'm thankful for what I have. Why? Because I'm free. My situation is gone. My problem, that issue, it's gone. It's, it's under me now. It's not me. It's God is so much bigger than your issues. He just wants to give you freedom to trust that he's brought you out of that situation. He says, hey, I'm your neuro, I'm your surgeon. I'm your heart surgeon. It's all about us saying, okay, I believe. I believe and I accept that you're going to have this surgery on me. And you know what? There's going to be a, a marvelous change in your life that you've never seen before. Your mindset will completely change because the things that are burdening you down, they'll be gone. Amen. It's amazing nowadays, I'm not that afraid to talk to someone as much as I used to be. Because there is a lot in me that said, hey, I'm, I'm less than. Who wants to be around this guy? But now I'm saying, I'm free. So how you doing? I'm happy. And that's what we need as true Christians, to know that we have experienced true freedom in Christ. Is there anyone here that wants true freedom? Anyone here that wants to experience that? Not, not tomorrow, but I'm talking about right now, today, to embrace that declaration of independence in Christ. Anyone want that? Please stand with me if you want that true freedom today. You want that freedom? To experience that freedom? We're going to we're going to pray to God. Thank you so much, Lord, for your wonderful love and your mercy. You have set us free. You have reconciled us to you, to experience you deep down in our hearts. You're the surgeon. You're the one who has taken out our problems, that we may embrace your love, not our situation, not our past, but what you have in store for us. Help us to keep your, your commands in our hearts, that love letter in our hearts, we may embrace you and truly, truly say in the end, thank God I am free at last. We love you. We thank you for all you've done for us. Ex help us that we may experience that freedom right now. Not tomorrow, but right now. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I'm just going to say, as you all, oh, you can all uh, sit down. As Martin Luther King says, as Martin Luther King says, free at last, amen? Free at last. Free at last. Thank God, God Almighty. Almighty, I am free at last. God bless you.